we moved to Kenya and we formed a board and we bought the piece of land that we had seen back in 2005. This five acres that didn't look like much. And we went and got an architect and uh, started to talk about building this home commensurate with the needs that Julie described. Uh, raising kids to be leaders that would be servants to the needy and the poor in their own nation. And so we're looking at building a home that has clean lines and has uh, plenty of space and uh, has built the right way, a way that uh, that when a child grows up there, they, they look around them every day and they see a home that speaks to them, you have worth, speaks to them, do things the right way yourself when you grow up. And so as we built this home, it was very important to us that we built it the right way, not just threw up a place with a tin roof place quickly that would provide a roof over children's heads and food and clothing. And so this took some time. It was difficult. There was no Home Depot or Lowe's out in the middle of where we built this place. And it was hard. And it took 14 months just to get a structure up. But when we did, day one came, January 27th, 2011. And we brought our first children home. The first one was named Joshua, which Yeshua Jesus, it's the same word. It means the Lord saves. And this little boy, four years old, who had been through a terrible trauma, came home and two others that day, and it changed everything. It was like a building project became a home. And the two of us had spent so much time and energy on this, and now we were finally getting to see the fruits of our labor. And so we got in the vehicle and we drove down the Trans-African Highway to go home that afternoon, it was, it was starting to be dusk, and I was talking to Julie and I said, you know, we don't have to decide this right now. We, we have time, we can wait, but we have to be aware that if we come down here every day and do what we did today, pour our hearts into loving the kids, and we're here for six months doing that every day, then that's gonna be hard if we decide to leave and go back to the U.S. like we've been planning on doing, because we had always talked about that. We talked about maybe we'll take our two kids back to graduate high school in a few years. So I said, we may want to stay up in the town we're living in, 25 minutes from here every day, and just come down on the weekends or once a month and check on our Kenyan staff and kind of administrate this project from afar so that we can, we can move back or we can pour ourselves into this every day and let ourselves get attached to the kids, let our hearts um, love them. If we do that, we need to recognize that means that we need to stay here forever. We can't leave. We don't have to make this decision right away. And so there was some silence for a few seconds and then I looked over at Julie and her face was a mess and she was crying. I, I should have known that was what was going on. And I said, what's the matter? And she said, I'm not, I'm not gonna administrate this project from afar. I can't do that. I didn't put all this work into this and I didn't spend today to walk away from this. And I said, well, are you willing then to live for, for the rest of your life? Is that something you're willing to do? And she said, resolutely, yes, I'm in. And I remember just kind of pushing the accelerator on the truck and just <laughs> settling in. And you know, we've never really looked back since then. I, I would honestly say our hearts have never looked back. Doesn't mean we've not struggled. It doesn't mean it's not been hard. But there have been 85 kids that have come in. And they are not a project to us. They're our own children. And um, they're all unique and beautiful. And. Um, I would, I would have to have a burning bush to know that God wanted me to move back to the U.S. to ever leave these children. And I know that it's the same for Julie.